What is going on, everybody, and welcome to NYYU. We are about to be introduced to Marcus Stroman via Zoom. <laughs> Anyway, guys, drop your voicemail, 804-592-6160. We're probably doing about two hours, baby. Leave a murder scene when I come round. In other words, you know that we about to kill it. I ain't for the talking, I said it, you know I did it. I'm putting on the show, the world is about to feel it. I know they're getting scared when I tell them that. We Simonetti, guys, we are ready to listen to a Zoom session. Not my Zoom session, another Zoom session of introducing a player. I guess this is the new way the Yankees go about their business. Not saying I'm a fan of it, I'm not a fan of it, but to each his own. This is going, this is the way the Yankees do their thing. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? When I come running all over you, whatever the hell it is, what are you going to do when the Hulk Hulkster comes? Okay, yeah, I had it wrong. By the way, guys, I wanted to start early, but I had to get in a fight with the mailman. So here I am now. I'm a little late. I wanted to start about 15 minutes early, but I had to give the mailman a good old Dusty Rhodes right on top of the head. I said, who you think you talking to, baby? Chaguanda Ching, a little five and five. But anyway, guys, of course, Strowman is... Going to be announced. It's going to be interesting to see what type of questions he gets. That's what I want to hear. I'm excited about that. Caleb Castro, Macho King. You know I got my... Cup of coffee in the big time, yeah. Cup of coffee in the big time. We got my guy, Oski. What's going on, Oski? How you doing? Moises Acevedo, what's up, brother? How you doing, Michael Vita? Craig Smith. Brandy, DJ Steelio, what's going on, my guy? How you doing? Baba Ganoush. That's a name right there, folks. Baba Ganoush. Anthony the Goat Medina. Yuri, what's up, brother? How you doing? Helen Keller had a fatty is in the chat. Helen Keller had a fatty. Well, let me tell you something. Helen Keller, there's one for you. I was going to go a couple of places with that one, but I'm going to choose not, okay? I'm going to choose not to right now. Yo, Joe, what's going on, brother? C-W-E, how you doing? Twiggy, DK Ghost, what's up, Jonathan? How you doing, Jacob Patrosi? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Okay? So... I'm assuming this is going to be on the Yes Network. Anybody have any idea whatsoever? But I believe this is going to be on Yes. Somebody told me that it might be on Zoom. 
I mean, uh, it's on Zoom. Somebody said it might be on X, uh, Twitter, X, Twitter, whatever the frig it is. But apparently some people think it might be streaming via Twitter. Uh, I don't know. Right now I got the Yes Network on. I was expecting that it would be Michael K. Showtime, but apparently it's supposed to be Strowman followed by Brian Cashman. So definitely a little intriguing stuff here to hear from both of those guys. But as of right now, we are just in a little bit of waiting mode. Um, I do have everything pulled up. So in case something, uh, if it's on Twitter, if it's on the Yes Network, we got it covered for you guys. Don't worry. Um, I definitely want to hear some of the questions, though, to be honest, because, you know, somebody has to bring up to Stro. Like, hey, bro, uh, you blocked just about 63.226% of the Yankee fan base. Do you have any intentions of letting them back into your Twitter feed? Ah, but we'll see. Randy, what's going on, Randy? How you doing? Yo, Elvis, Dan Dog, what's going on, everybody? Scott Wright, my guy. Anthony, what's up, man? Ah, he was the big free agent signing, Anthony. Look, man, we're going to have a lot of time to talk about that. Matter of fact, our good friend Mario Gomez is going to be joining us likely after uh, the Strowman presser is completed. We'll have Mario in here. And, you know, what? my plan today is to be here until a little after or right around 5 o'clock, depending on how the Yankees go about this whole thing here. Um, again, my understanding yesterday was Strowman first, and then they're going to have Brian Cashman uh, drop some knowledge on all of us. So we'll see what happens. But no real news today. The Yankees signed, um, what's his name? Jose Rojas, utility infielder, minor league deal, kind of like the Van Meter signing yesterday. The Yankees seem like now they're kind of just locking everything up, putting guys, eh, filling out AAA, you know, uh, filling out the depth on the team. We'll see what happens. Corn Cobb, how you doing, Corn Cobb? Let me tell you. Austin, what's going on, Austin? Why is Cash speaking, saying the Yanks tried for Snell and shit? Uh, I don't know. He's probably, I mean, it would be kind of stupid to come out right now and be like, ah, hey, you know, there's... Nothing out there for us. I don't think that would be a smart way to go about it. He might want to talk about the Strowman situation. I, I don't know. Maybe that's possible. But I do have Yes Network on. They are still currently in commercial. Um, I don't see anything as of late, so I'm going to keep talking to the chat. Acevedo, what's going on, brother? How you doing, my guy? Connor O'Neill. Pete, can't wait. My merchandise gets delivered today. Let's go, baby. And while why you merch is fire, I'm not just saying that because, you know, because it's me and it's our stuff and I designed it. But and uh, why you merch is pretty fire. All right. You guys are saying it's on right now. I still got help. No kids help. No kid hungry dot org is what I'm seeing currently. Now it's showing. Yes. Now I'm seeing a nice bacon, egg and cheese. All right. So it looks like we're going to get Marcus Stroman right after this. Make sure the volume is good. All right, guys. Looks like we're ready to bring you guys the Marcus Stroman presser. I have it on the on the website, so it is streaming. So I might be a little behind you guys, but here we go. There he is. Hey, Marcus, Gary. Phillips here we go. Daily News. All right, here, here we go, Congratulations guys. Congratulations and welcome back home. Um, it's been reported that you and Brian Cashman met face to face in Tampa before signing. Uh, I'm just curious, how did that meeting come about, and what exactly did you guys go over? Good question. Yeah, it was, it was on the phone. Um, wasn't wasn't face to face. Um, I ended up meeting with Booney. Came over. Aaron Boone came to my home uh, throughout the process. Had a few calls with some of the guys on the team. A few texts with some guys on the team. Um, but yeah, me and Cashman kind of hashed out uh, whatever it was that we had from a few years ago. We kind of laughed about it. And and we moved on. He let me know how interested he was in me as a pitcher. Um, thought that I was someone who would kind of thrive in the lights and the pressure. And I thought it was <laughs> yeah, a perfect fit. Who were some of the other guys that reached out to you? Yeah, I talked to Judge, Cole. Uh, I talked to Volpe a bit, Rizzo. Um, mm. And then, yeah, obviously Cash and Booney, mainly. Booney. Gotcha. Thank you. Hmm. We can go next to Jack Curry. All right, good old Curry. 
Hey, Marcus, good to see you. Jack Curry from the S Network. Across the last few days, you've expressed a lot of excitement and a lot of mm. enthusiasm about becoming a Yankee. Mm. How would you describe what the Yankees are getting in Marcus Stroman? Mm. Good one. Oh, I mean, someone who's going to compete to the highest level, someone who prepares to the highest degree, uh, a great teammate, someone who shares knowledge with, with everyone within the organization, someone who loves to learn. Um, I already talked to Garrett a bit. I can't wait to just kind of be around the guys. And I feel like I'm someone who adapts very easily and I'm able mm. to take bits and pieces from other people's games and kind of put it into my game. So I'm I'm just excited to learn from 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 guys like Garrett Cole, who's been one of the greats in the game, Rodon, who's been elite for many years, um, Nestor, who's a guy who kind of messes messes around with timing. Clark Schmidt is a guy with a ton of upside who's got incredible stuff. So as far as the staff, it's it's going to be, I think we have one of the better staffs out there, and it's just going to be the ability to share knowledge between each other and kind of learn and adapt. I'm, I'm just excited for all that. Thank you. We can move next to Brian Hoke. Hey, Marcus, you mentioned the thing from a few years ago when the Yankees didn't trade for you. What did you need to hear from Cashman? How did you guys clear that up? It was quick, man. It was quick, you know. It was the uh, we literally laughed about it, you know. He 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 let me know his his quick little piece um mm -hmm. about how it didn't necessarily come out is essentially how he wanted it to. He let me know that I was someone who he thought was always going to be a good competitor, someone who could handle the lights, someone who thrived in the pressure, and that was kind of the ultimate draw, you know what I mean? Um I'm not someone who shies away from the limelight or pressure or the lights. I think a lot of guys would avoid <laughs> avoid coming to New York and, and playing for the Yankees because yeah. because of that reason. And I'm someone who, like I said, I feel like it it brings out the best in me. So I'm looking forward mm. to this opportunity. I think Cash is is kind of right there um, in agreement with me as far as he thinks it's going to be um, a good situation for the both of us. And, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited. Obviously, I grew up from Long Island. I grew up going to Yankee games and and to be able to put on the pinstripes that's that's something we all dream about as kids so I can't wait solid answer very solid answer Respect. so far across the board from Stroman see what else they hey, got Marcus, maybe something about Respect, the fans NBC or New York welcome back <clears throat> uh what do you expect your relationship to be with the fans there and what do you think of the New York fans in general see if it's changed man the New York fans are the most you know, uh, passionate fan groups probably in the world. You know, like I said, I grew up there. I'm from there. I understand that um, playing there, it's 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 all about your performance and and how you come on the field. And like I said, I'm someone who I feel like the pressure and the lights it, it brings out the best of me. So I'm excited. I'm excited to feel the energy of of New okay. York Yankee, the the crowd, the buzz. I think my start days is something that. I'm getting chills kind of thinking about looking forward to. So, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait because I, I know the pressure and the lights that it comes with. And like mm. I said, I'm someone that um, I only feel mm -hmm. like I thrive in those moments. All right. All right, Marcus, you said Brian it. Cuddy. <laughs> he did change up. He did change up quite a bit. Marcus, my name is Brendan Cuddy. I'm with The Athletic. Uh, thank you for taking the time <laughs> and congratulations on the deal. Two questions. First, Last year, you finished the season uh, a little iffy health-wise uh, with the, I think, the rib and the hip. Where are things now? No, I'm perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to rock, man. Nice. You know, I'm four or five bullpens in. Body feels great. Body feels great. I'm fully healed. Everything feels uh, brand new. So just accept. By the way, too, Stroman is in phenomenal shape, and he's he's a big believer. If you watch his... um. A lot of his Instagram and stuff like that. He does a lot of plyometric stuff. So yoga. He does a lot of stretches. So that that's a good thing, especially with recovery. That's a good that's a good thing. That's that's another reason why I'm excited to 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 be a Yankee. You know, I think people will have a a, a different view of me after my tenure here. I don't think Cash, I don't think Booney, I don't think Judge would would want me to be a part if they didn't know my character and how I was as a teammate. So I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited for this opportunity. I can't wait to learn from all the guys, and I can't wait to compete. Competing mm -hmm. is something I do to the highest level. 
And when it comes to put my body and my mind in, in, in the ultimate position, that's something that I'm always working on, whether it be at the field or away from the field. So yeah, I can't, I can't wait to go out there and compete and put the pinstripes on. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, Greg Joyce, please. Nothing really Greg. directing from the fans, which hey, Marcus, upsets me about Greg this media. Well, let's see. Maybe we can get you, something. You were just saying, uh, you think they might have a different view of you after your tenure tenure. What what is kind of your goal of that view uh of what you want to accomplish here kind of on and off the field? When the oh, no goal, just for people to understand the real me. Um I just feel like when people understand the real me and get around me and really get to know me, um, they understand um the human being that I am deep down. So hmm. like I said, I, I I'm pretty sure the Yankees uh done their research in the, in the process and they wouldn't reach out or even want this partnership um, if they didn't know about my character as a human being, you know, so. Good uh, answer. Yeah, I'm just excited to to be a Yankee. I mean, it is just a little upsetting because a very, and, and this is why NYYU is here. And as we continue to grow, you know, we're going to get, we're going to get somebody and people into these things because the question there is regarding the fan base. It's a very simple question. Hey, Marcus, you know, um, your Twitter nowadays is a source of communication with fans, uh, fans and everybody else around you. You have blocked a, a large majority of of Yankee fans on Twitter. Is that something that that you will reconsider going forward, or the way you're utilizing Twitter going forward? It's a very easy question. You don't want to come across as sounding petty. Oh my God, you're blocking people, but it's very it's a very fair question because. At the end of the day, people go, Twitter doesn't mean anything. Well, it is a form of communication nowadays, and that is a way that fans kind of feel, hey, I could go at this guy or this guy is going to hear me. And unfortunately, the media does not put the fan in its topic of conversation anymore, even though they are supposed to be our voice. That is one of the biggest problems of media today. In every five days. So I live in Tampa. My home's in Tampa. So spring training is essentially a 10-minute drive. So as far as fit, um, my brother's at IMG Academy, which is also close by now as well. It just he couldn't blocked be a better fit his um, at this point in my career. <laughs> Randy Miller, you look very comfortable. Please unmute. Randy Miller. Hi, Marcus. Here we go. Randy Miller, NJ.com, New York Star Ledger. Uh, when you look at last year, you had a 2.28 ERA through June 20th. Your last 11 outings, 8.29. Uh, how much of that was hip related? What went wrong in the second half? And what do you think you are capable of? Uh, you say you think the Bronx is going to bring the best out of you playing with a great lineup, other pitchers. Can you be better than you than you ever been? Yeah, yeah, I, I, mm. I do think the best is still in me. So like you said, um, sometimes when 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 you have those those moments in that city and that buzz and that energy and, and that pressure, it brings out. A, a different animal so i'm I'm excited mm -hmm. for that possibility my body's in in incredible um i'm shaped now i battled a few injuries at the at the end of last year but i mean at the beginning of last year i think i was one of the best pitchers in baseball so when i'm healthy i would put myself as one of the best pitchers up in baseball always in the game and like I said, I feel healthy. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. My body's in the best position. It's Hit that like and button, everybody. So Smack that like button for us. At this point. Those poor numbers at the end of last year, though, was that health related where you were trying to pitch through things and it ended up affecting your numbers? And and what was it that was affecting you that that uh, hurt you? Yeah, yeah. I had a little hip injury, um, a little hip injury that I ended up coming back from. And right when mm. literally the day I threw my bullpen and I was coming back, um, I had a, a, a rib thing that's fully healed now. Um, yeah, it was just battling a few things, you know what I mean? Then trying to get back as quick as possible. So very confident guy. Things kind of kind of working against me ever since um, I kind of went on that in the second half, pretty much. But like I said, when I was healthy in the first half, I was kind of on a roll. There was a stretch in there um, where I threw my load probably got a little too high, and I probably didn't um, get the work that I probably need to, and I ended up needing to take like um, a little break, and then it was just. Yeah, just kind of spiraled after that. But yeah, I'm someone who's able to put my body in the best position. And my off season was was incredible this year. And I'm looking forward to going out there and throwing 30, 33, 34 starts um, each and every year. Thank you. 
That's what he needs to do. That's what the Yankees need him to do. And Marcus Stroman, you can't knock him on a confidence level. He is surely a confident guy, no doubt about it. He's expecting to have a very, very strong year. And look, I know some people may go, ah, that's, he's, he's a, you know, um, what do you mean one of the best pitchers in baseball? What is he supposed to expect himself to be? That, that I wouldn't want him to say, I'm one of the, you know, I'm one of the better guys out there. No, I'm one of the best pitchers in baseball when I'm on my game and when I'm healthy. That's the right answer. And as of right now, you know, yeah, he doesn't lack confidence. He understands the position he's in. And it's it's going to be, um, he's going to have to prove a lot of people wrong, you know, at the end of the day. And he's going to have to prove himself right and not wrong. He said some things that, like I said before, the receipts are there. The receipts are all there. So, to have a big season this year from back home and to have kind of the people from my childhood be able to be there and present just like kind of just puts like a lot of emotions um a lot of different emotions um kind of come to the surface so i can't wait man i can't wait it's hard for me to i'm someone who pitches off kind of the energy and and the buzz of a crowd so uh i can't wait for those those days on on, on my start day Go to John Schwartz. Let's hear this question, then I'll answer what Yankees. Hey, Marcus, uh, John Schwartz, Yankees Magazine. Uh, just to follow up right there, you mentioned that you like pitching in that bright light in a sense. Mm. What is it about that attention that you feel brings out the best side of you? Is there a specific feeling that you're chasing kind of uh, as you approach that start? I'm someone who just I just like the nerves and the the you know, the lead up, the anxiety of it, the nerves. I feel like I'm able to just lock it in at a different level than most. Let me just cover real quick what Carlos said in the chat. Fangraphs projects uh, um, Marcus Stroman to have 167 innings pitch in a 403 year array. I'll I'll, I'll try to uh, play with those numbers a little bit. Here's what I'll say. If he did that exactly, I'd be very happy. I think every Yankee fan would be happy. If he can have a 3.87 ERA and go 150 plus innings, I think every Yankee fan will be ecstatic, to be honest with you. If he has a slightly under four ERA, he can give you 150 plus innings, which is 20 something more than he, or 20 more roughly than he, maybe 16, 17 more innings than he had in the last year. I think you'd be very, very happy with that. And as long as he's healthy come the end of the year going into the postseason, I think you would have to be. Very, very happy with that, to be quite honest with you. Um, not every team has three or four guys going 150 plus innings, I'm just saying. So if you almost feel you can guarantee, I'll say this right now. If Garrett Cole could be Garrett Cole, whether it's a slightly worse year, even a better year, you never know. He could be going on a real stretch right now. If Garrett Cole can do that, two of the four guys currently in the Yankees rotation, I would say, really has to go 140-plus innings, 135-plus innings, and the Yankees could be in a very, very good spot as long as those three would be healthy come the postseason. The Yankees right now are locking a shit ton of talent into minor leagues that they could almost trade for anybody come the deadline. So whether that's something that they look at, uh, you know, around the All-Star break a little after, Dylan Cease, Corbin Burns, uh, Bieber, Whoever is out there still that we know they have interest in now is a very strong possibility that the Yankees would be able to add to that rotation. So you really want to make sure that these guys give you two, two of those other four give you 135, 140 plus innings. And you, you really would be set or in a much better position. So going into any start on any given day, you know, I might, be displaying a different percentage of pitches just depending on how I'm feeling in that start. So that sinker, I, I would think, it would give you an advantage over other pitchers who, I mean, especially in Yankee Stadium where you're going to be making mm -hmm. most of the majority of your starts. I can't count the number of times I've seen a pitcher turn around and throw up his hands in, in disbelief that a routine fly ball to right is now a home run in Yankee Stadium. And yeah. that, it looks like you wouldn't have, wouldn't have to worry about that as much. It's a ground ball pitcher. Yeah, I mean that's part of the game, you know. That's 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 the dimensions of the stadium. I'm not someone who who. I'm I'm more worried about the pitch that I made rather than the swing or rather than the result. Great answer. You know, and so it's, great it, it, answer. It, it always ends up being the pitch. So I'm not someone who dwells. I'm not someone who makes excuses. It's it's usually on <laughs> me. 
And nice. I'm someone who kind of will grab the ball and, and, and move on to the next pitch. But yeah, I think my, my repertoire does match well for Yankee Stadium as far as uh, throwing my sinker and being able to keep the ball on the ground. We got a great defense, great infield defense. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity. All right. Thank you. Go next, we go next to Max Goodman. All right, little Max hey, Goodman over here. Max Hi Goodman guy. with NJ.com as well. Okay. Like you mentioned earlier that you think this team has one of the better starting staffs in the league. I'm curious mm. just overall, what do you think the Yankees are capable of this year with the other offseason moves that they've made as well? Oh, come on. Yeah, come on. I mean, I think we're, we're capable of definitely having a, a, a deep October run. You know what I mean? That's obviously the goal. That's why we play this game is to 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 win championships and to go deep into October. Boom. And I think, obviously, I think this team is definitely capable adding adding Soto to this lineup. Uh, I've talked about Soto openly in the past before. I, I arguably, I think he's the best hitter in baseball. I think him and Judge are arguably one, two, um, top three, four, five guys in baseball. You know what I mean? Depending on how you want to, depending on how you want to cut it. But not wrong judges I'm, I'm i'm thankful to be judges teammate if I, if I take judges numbers out against my numbers in my career i'd probably have like a lot closer to a three probably era to be honest with you so that it's is good true to have him on my side and then competing against soto man i mean he's incredible i mean i've i've faced some 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 good hitters man but i always tell everyone that soto is the best hitter i've ever faced just his his knowledge mm. of the strike zone is is mm. second to none he probably yep. knows a ball or strike better than the umpire does. And oh, his yeah. ability to just fire on pitches in the zone, his his pitch recognition. He's just different, man. He's different. So I, I can't imagine starters or pitchers having to face so to and judge back to back. That's gonna cause a little bit of a little bit of stress, definitely, within the minds of, of some pitchers having to face those two guys. So yeah, the team is dynamic and then you have a bunch of young guys around the staff. Like I said, Cole is is Cy Young, if not Cy Young candidate, each and every year. Yep. Rodon, when he's right, arguably the same. And then Nestor, like I said, he's another guy who can perform incredibly well. And then oh, I actually yeah. think Clark Schmidt is going to be a guy for many, many years in this league. Um, once he fine tunes the little things, his his repertoire is incredible, and he's got some big, big, big time stuff. Yep. So I think Clark Schmidt is going to be, he's going to end up being a guy for us or or a guy in this league for many, many years. A great answer right there. And, and one of the main reasons why we have talked about why Soto is so important for the Yankees, a lockup for years to come, because you just heard that from a pitcher's perspective, knowing you're going into a game and teammate or not, it doesn't matter, but to face, but to face both of those guys back to back, to face Judge and Soto back to back for any pitcher is dangerous. It's it's very tough. You got to be sharp to to you know navigate that type of lineup, and that's what the Yankees used to have. So when you're able to potentially lock this in for the next seven, eight, nine years or whatever it's gonna be, you do it. You know what I mean? You you gotta be able to make that decision and and, and give this guy whatever the hell he needs. To remain a Yankee. Thank you for being a friend. My brother Rod Thompson, it is Rod's birthday today. Everybody say happy birthday, Rod Thompson. He says Strowman is marrying my unborn daughter. I was about to say, Rod, I had no idea you had a daughter. Like, well, you, you have known you all this time and you don't tell me his unborn daughter, okay? All right. Happy I was birthday, in the city Rob! For a few days, you know, I was up for my physical, so I was just mobbing around the city. Um, I'm in a fashion, so I'm always shopping. So, kind of just swung by Kith and picked up a hat. Uh, obviously, grew up with a bunch of New York Yankee hats in my rotation, but playing on different teams, you're not, you can't really don those in the off season. Um, so yeah, just very, very thankful to 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 be a Yankee. I feel like the Yankee hat is a fashion icon in itself, very even true. separate from from MLB. So. Excited to. By the way, so is the NYYU hat. Fashion icon. You don't got to be a Yankee fan, but the NYYU hat. Let me tell you something right now. I had some people really love this logo. There's some sons of bitches out there that really love this logo. All right. Just saying. So thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. See you guys soon. Okay. All right. Well, that'll wrap that one up.
Uh, per my understanding, I don't know if I'm um, if I'm wrong here, but I do believe that Brian Cashman is expected to speak too. So I'm waiting on that. We'll see what happens. I'm I'm waiting to see if uh, Brian Cashman is going to come on and speak. They pro- they may not bring that one live. Uh, they may not bring that one live, but we'll see. Um, hey, you know, give Strowman a hat. One of the things we may be looking to do is to hook some of the players up with some gear um, come spring training. So that might be something that we look to do is to hook some people up with some gear. Um, we might we might be doing that. We might be doing that. So you might see some players rocking NYYU stuff during spring. I'm just saying. And no, Nick, they did not bring up anything about his past tweets. Again, guys, they were probably told not to. I wouldn't doubt it. But then again, this is why the New York media kind of pisses me off in many ways because they don't do that shit, and they should. There was no reason not to. But guys, we are now going to bring in our good friend Mario Gomez into the picture. Let me just make sure um, we got this Zoom set up here. One second, Mario. Let me get this fixed for a quick second. Mario is here, folks. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. We got Mr. Gomez coming coming at us now. Let me see something real quick. All right, that's all set. There we go. All right, perfect. Let's make that transition. There he is. The one and only Mario. Gomez, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Let me fix this thing again. What is up, chat? How's everybody doing, man? Pete, I don't yeah. know how you feel. It was good. But I'm fired up, bro. I'm ready to go, man. I want spring good. training right now. It it was definitely good. Um, I was saying it before, <laughs> and look, see, Mario got the Yankee the NYYU hat on because it is a fashion item. It is 100%. a fashion item. It's a fashion <laughs> item. It's just just like what Stro said. It's a fashion item, but. 100%. Uh, nah, man. Look, he um, he answered everything the way he should. Um, he had everything really to a T. He wants to, you know, he he wants to do very very well in this club. You know, being from New York, it does mean something. You know, I I know a lot of people who aren't from New York don't get it, but New Yorkers, and I'm not saying nobody else does, but New Yorkers have a lot of pride in New York. You know what I mean? We're the first ones over, born in the Bronx. You know what I mean? It's it's quick to say you born from one of the boroughs. And for Strowman, you know, he he understands everything he said. He understands all the stuff with Cashman and, you know, the tweets and all that and, and how the fans are going to react to him. And the best answer that I get from that is I like pitching in the big moment. I like the anxiety before a game. That's big. That was That's good big. to hear. Because, you know, a lot of big. guys... They rather take, you know, I feel like a little bit less money, maybe a million or two less, Pete, to go play elsewhere because they don't want to deal with the fans booing or whatever the case yeah. may be. They know the media here is is going to get on you after one bad start. You know, if he pitches bad in Houston, you know, including a lot of Yankee fans, if he pitches bad in Houston, you know, and that first game, it's going to be, you know, it was a terrible deal. Why did yeah. we do this? There was other guy available. You should have paid Giolito. There's going to be a lot of things that, People will be talking about Pete, but nah, man, I, I like the energy he was bringing. Listen, yeah. reporters, can we ask him about Twitter? Can we put a yeah, little bit, a little question in there about Twitter, man? I would have liked that, but that was definitely upsetting um, that they didn't ask him that because, and I don't know, I, I got a I, typically I sometimes I get a gut feeling and I'm like, all right, that that's what happened there. But I had like a little gut feeling there that was like, you know what it was? They probably they probably told them that they don't ask about that or something like that. That's kind of the way I see it because that's such I a guess touching not. topic. Like everybody knows that that was a topic to discuss, to talk about it, and it's a very simple. It's a very simple question. You yeah, don't got to ask it. about it. It's it's very very easy just to say you know, Twitter is a is a major form of communication in today's world, and you know there has been a lot of back and forth with you and Yankee fans and how they feel about you coming here, and a lot of Yankee fans feel like you know you you've kind of you know, kind of brushed it to the side here. And, and you know, how are you planning on kind of fixing that that uh, um, relationship? And he could have simply said, by going out there and being the best Strowman I could be. And That's everybody it. back, okay. Just yeah. winning ball games. And you know what that means, though? Games. We're going to have to ask him the question when we go down there. That's, oh, that, that's what that is. I 100% will. I 100% <laughs> will. I got some things lined up, guys. Look, we're ready for spring training. We can't wait for it. 
Matter of fact, guys, on the 22nd, I know a lot of you know already about this, but we're planning on doing an eight-hour stream. Uh, Mario got the Dr. Pepper ready, so that means he's going to be hype as ever. Like, no doubt about it. But Monday the 22nd, mark it on your calendar, 1 p.m. start time. Me, Mario, Kev, Dane, we might have some extras coming on that day, guys, but we do have a goal because we are heading out to spring training. We're trying to get some media credentials. We got to get additional equipment. We got to buy stuff that we can record with and microphones for outside our regular setup for George Steinbrenner Field. And, of course, we're asking this community's help to do that. We also had to get a larger Airbnb. So there's a lot of stuff that went into this, and we are not that type of company yet that we can just go ahead and... Yet, yet, yet. Yet, yet, soon, exactly. Soon, no. yet. Keyword, yet. We're not there yet, but I got a lot of fun questions to ask, and, you know, I think that'll be a good one for Strowman. I definitely want to talk to Carlos Rodone. He mentioned Rodone as being, you know, a Cy Young candidate when he's healthy, and we'll see what happens. Seeing that ERA there on Pete makes me absolutely sick that close to seven ERA. I know that's not the guy. I really want to believe that's not the guy as well. Because listen, that's what Yankee fans see him as right now. Yeah. You know, a six, eight, five ERA, but hopefully he's healthy. We can, you know, talk to him, ask him a few questions, and hopefully he's ready to go. There's no setbacks, and the guy's just ready to pitch. He gets his three or four spring training starts, and then. To Houston, we go to start off the season, so that'll be exciting. Yeah, man, I I can't wait for it. And you know, he he talked about the rotation. And look, was he meant to be a critic of the rotation? No, not at all. Obviously, he's gonna, you know, hype up the rotation. But when he was talking, Mary, I brought up a couple of things. I said we we got to expect that Garrett Cole is gonna be Garrett Cole, right? I, I don't think there's another way to look at that. He has to be. Um. The guy. Or we're in trouble. Or we're in some serious trouble. Or we're in trouble. But then the other thing I said is, out of the other four guys, so your Nestor Cortez, your Clark Schmidt, your Strowmans, and your Rodones, you need two of those guys to at least give you 140 innings. That's the way I feel about it. At least bare minimum 140 plus of good, solid pitching. My hope, and I think everybody's hope would be, that that is Rodone and that is Marcus Stroman. Because if those three are anchoring that rotation and holding it down, they could be a they they could really surprise people. No, 100 percent And you know, hopefully it's well, let's be real. There's probably gonna be an IL stint in there for Rodon and Stroman. They'll probably skip a start, maybe in June or July, something like yeah. that. But let's be real, he's not gonna give us two innings or two hundred innings, excuse me. It's, right. it's gonna be tough for us to ask for two hundred innings. But if he can give us 140, 150 innings. What is that, 25 starts? Yeah. Seven starts for, you know, the depth that we got now. I mean, I, I consider that a win. You know, a four ERA. Would love a three, but, you know, a low four ERA. That's a huge bounce back from last year. And then we're not having, you know, a ton of question marks. And hopefully we're talking about um, postseason baseball. So No doubt about it. One of the good questions, Mary, that they asked them as I got this pulled up on the screen. Let me get my face off there. Is, you know, right field shouldn't be too much of a worry. For Marcus sinker, Stroman, considering he's been a he's a sinker baller, man. He's a ground ball guy. You see that 57.4% ground ball rate that our good friend Kev absolutely loves. Big ground ball percentage guy. <laughs> he absolutely loves the ground ball percentage. Yep. But but there's a guy right there in um in Stroman who also answered that question very, very good. I don't know if you caught that one, but he was like, I'm not a guy that makes excuses. You know, I'm not going to go out there and make excuses about, you know, how I'm doing or, um, um, you know, what is expected of me. If if I make a bad pitch, it's on me. It yep. was my fault. Do you remember what we talked about, um, Pete, during last season especially? Accountability? Yeah. You know, all we ask for is guys to go out there. Listen, if he makes a bad pitch, it's on nobody else. Not blaming the catcher, not blaming whoever whoever's calling the game. Straight up saying, listen. That's on me. I made a bad pitch. It's Yankee Stadium. This is where I'm pitching. Not that, oh, it's only out one out of 30 ballparks. No, if it's out of this ballpark, then it was a problem. It was a bad pitch straight up. That's right. So that's, that's right. all we really ask out of players. So listen, I see a lot of people in the chat saying, you know, they're kind of 50-50 on them. So either you hate them or you love them. But listen, if he's winning those ball games, you know you guys are going to be giving him a round of applause, especially if you're at Yankee Stadium. So that's all we care about is winning. 100%. He pitched well for us. 100%. You got to. And, 
And look, he has, he's a, look, New Yorkers are very, are typically very, very confident people. One, uh, Marcus Stroman is a very, very confident guy. Marcus Stroman believes he is one of the better, better or not, one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball when he's healthy. And according to him, the hip injury is gone. One big thing that I know, I know for a fact that Stroman does a lot, he is very, very big into, cardio but he's also very very big into stretching plyometrics things of that nature which you know relaxes those muscles a little bit so a, a guy that should be able to heal up a little quicker shouldn't necessarily have hip problems and things of that nature so I do I expect the best of Marcus Stroman this year and God knows the Yankees need it you got some good depth you got Warren down there you got Hampton because you know, and the reason I'm bringing those guys up right now, Mario, is I don't think the Yankees are right into the rotation at this point. Um, I would almost be very surprised if they did, but I don't. I think they're past it now. I don't think they are. I know you're at a four right now. I'm just holding on to. I'm about a six. That you know, ten for you know, ten. That means that they're you know they're definitely gonna add somebody one. Yeah. I just want to hear what Brian Cashman has to say. I knew yeah. Strowman was gonna be really good with the answers. You know, I thought he was going to be a true professional when he came to the Zoom again. You know, face-to-face -face is is different than, you know, being on Zoom. I think right. there's still a chance that the Yankees add somebody, but that all depends on the quotes from Brian Cashman. Because if you just go out and yeah. say, and it's January 18th, pitchers and catchers report, what, about four weeks from now? Yep. If you go out and say, we're done, four weeks, uh, you know, four weeks away from pitchers and catchers reporting, that's where I'm like, I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean, that would uh, be, we'll I see. We'll see what he says. That. I was talking about that earlier. That would be pretty damn odd if he just comes out and goes, "Hey, we're done right now." I'm like, that that wouldn't make too much sense unless he's trying to negotiate through the media and all that stuff. But I, you know, there was an article. I I want to say it may have been today, but I did see it somewhere where uh, one of the reporters said the Yankees aren't out on Snell. They don't believe it. I forgot exactly who it was, but I didn't. That, I did not see that. No. That they don't believe, it might have been Sherman, that they don't believe they're out on Snell because, again, it's kind of what we've been saying is, what's the market? What's Quiet. Snell's market right now? Quiet I mean, right now, four weeks away. He's going to have to really, at some point, possibly decide, do I want to look to win or do I take money to go to a place where, you know, that team may not be a winner. They may not be ready to win. They may be a couple of years away. And I'm 31 years old going on 32. Do I want to do that? Or he takes a three-year deal, maybe with an opt-out after one, and plays for a team like the Yankees and tries to win. Hell, look, if I'm the Yankees and, and, it, and it keeps getting further down that line and further down that line, you know, maybe he bites the bullet on something that's $40 million or so for a season, two years, three years. And yeah. I think the Yankees would be all over that. I really do. Right now, I think they'd be all over that. I think he'd be willing to do something like that, Pete. My biggest issue with that is I don't think Scott Boris. Scott Boris is looking yeah. for the most money for, you know, his client. I think a team yeah. is willing to go, you know, 200. When the dust settles, 180, 200. Will the Yankees be willing to go maybe, you know, four years pretty close to that? I don't know. You know, yeah. I thought after one year. But if we're getting towards, you know, February, if he's not signed by, like, February 1st, I would start to feel a little bit more confident that, you know, the Yankees will be willing to do – that three-year high AV with a couple opt-outs, um, I could see that. But as of right now, I just think he's going to go to you know the team that offers him the most money because it's been yeah, quiet. It's Again, we don't really know. We don't. It's really possible. Know. We got a super chat from my brother Rod Thompson. Thank you all for the birthday wishes. I need to know if Strowman's birthday, interview Rob. has changed your minds about him. So yeah, I'll ask the I'll ask the fan base that. Have you guys you know after hearing that? Do you guys feel like it's kind of, you know, change your mind a little bit? Um, I'm more I got to see. I just got to see what he does on the field. It's kind of, well, it's a little different between him and Stan. Obviously, Stan has been with us for a while, but yeah. I just got to see how the guy performs. You know, the guy's performing. I'm going <laughs> to root him on. Either way, I'm going to root him on. I'm going to root for the Yankees to win. I'm a Yankee fan, you know? Of course. But I just got to see. Again, it's a Zoom. It's not, you're not face-to-face -face with somebody looking at a computer screen. Right. And the connection, I don't know what's up with that connection, Pete. I feel like it was cutting yeah, out a little bit. Some I was like, dude. See, see, if that's me, what would I say, Mario? Are you connected to Ethernet? 
<laughs> Guys, I don't plug yeah, man, the Ethernet just, line. You need to be plugged in the Ethernet, all right? It's like, what are we doing, man? You've got a new contract. Let's get this guy some good Wi-Fi. But nah, man, I'm just, uh, I got to see what he does. You know, spring trading, obviously. You want him to have a couple good starts just to feel good about it, especially him and Rodon. You need oh, yeah. those guys to have good starts. And Nestor, that's what I'll be looking at. The rotation and John Carlo. And, you know, yeah. a little bit of Wells, a little bit of Volpe, but Volpe killed spring training and look what happened in the season. So I'm yeah. not, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt and everything, but I need to see um, what uh, he does in spring training. And hopefully he's healthy, no setbacks for any of these guys and ready to, ready to rock and roll because it's, it's coming up soon. Yeah, and you mentioned um, Stanton there for a second. Um, our friend Johnny Lasagna posted something about Stanton the other day. Yep. Kind of, and, and he is right in many of it is, even if he got, and, he, and he's, you know, maybe a little bit leaner, guys typically don't tend to get better in their mid-30s. You know, they need new legs. He needs new legs. Like, <laughs> there's no such thing right now as a leg transplant that I know of. You know, that this guy gets brand new kneecaps and shit. Uh, I mean, if they can make him robotic, that would be better. That'd be but amazing. That would be amazing. But <laughs> other than that, you know, uh, how much better could you expect Stanton to be? You know, there's a projection out there that's saying maybe 30 plus homes. If he ever did that, I mean, I think you got to be happy. But can Stan hit 240? Can Stan even hit 230 anymore? I mean, that's the concern. And that's going to be a big if for the Yankees this year, especially that offense. I remember seeing the quote from Brian Cashman, actually, you know, our buddy Johnny Lasagna posted that. And it was basically how Cashman said, I'm not going to tell you Stanton's going to play every game because he's not. He's probably going to go to the I.O. Something along those lines, guys. You know, yeah. don't quote me on that, but something along those lines. So I'm I'm seeing that and I'm like, you see the pictures of Stanton, you know, he looks a little bit thinner. Well, what okay. is that really going to do? I want to I wanna see what he does. You know, we could be talking about this for the next month. What if he's looking terrible in spring training? He looks even worse. Or he has, like, no power now. What if that's yeah. the case? And yeah. he's still running the same way. Like, I mean, I don't know, you know. Age, yeah. you know, father time is undefeated. We knew that with, with guys like JD. Sometimes it's just yeah. age, bro. Like, you just can't do it anymore. You can do all the workouts you want, all, you know, the training, but you just can't anymore. You're just too old. But we'll see, man. We'll see what's Stan. Yeah, and look, man, baseball is becoming more and more of a young man's game. You know, not everybody's Barry Bonds and they get in their 37s and become the greatest player on planet Earth. You know, it doesn't always happen. So the expectations of Stan, I think you almost got to you gotta get yourself to be surprised that he has a solid year, then expect it. Um, I can't about? expect it. You know, I'm sitting back, and I'll be honest, I, I'll even throw Anthony Rizzo in there. Anthony Rizzo's continuing to get older. You know, I think he's going to be, what, 33 or 34 so both of these guys are starting to get over that hump of when, you know, you do expect a little bit of a uh, of a decline, so to say. But um, I, yeah. I'm setting myself up that I expect maybe more from the bottom of the order than I do in those five, six spots, four or five, however the Yankees go about that, and, and where Definitely. they place a guy like Labor Torres. It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, two things. I'm not holding my breath for Stan and LeMay. You have, I think I made that clear on yeah. Brock's nothing with Kevin and, and being on here with you during the offseason. Um, I'm really not holding my breath on those two guys. If they do anything that, you know, is way better than last year, I'd be really surprised. And I see yeah. Nick with a comment here saying, thinner does not mean you can catch up to the fastball. It's a fact. Just because you're thinner doesn't mean you can catch up to, you know, 98. That's right. And you said, I think you said it yesterday on the live, Pete, that – Guys are going after Stanton. They're not afraid. Oh, you see a lot of like 96 down the middle. He was missing last year. And I mean, if he hits it, yeah, it's going to go. It's going to go yeah. a ways. But if I mean, he hasn't been touching it. Stanton took, the, I mean, by, by all means, the worst at bat last year was Jose Trevino's at bat when he struck out and the pitch almost hit him in the tit. Oh, my God. That was the worst at bat. And I've never seen an at bat of all my years of watching baseball. That was by far <laughs> the worst at bat I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen a guy swing and get hit in the chest almost. I've never seen that, that in my life. That's why that's why Austin Willis is going to break out this year, and I, I'm pretty confident And if I that. see Tre Trevi, I got to ask him. I got to ask Trevino. Let me ask you a question. That at bat you had last year, the one you almost got hit in the tit, what happened? He's going to say hit and run. <laughs> He's going to say it was a hit and run. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it was. I had no choice but to swing. But uh, Stanton took some horrible swings last year. I mean, he had some terrible at-bats. 
He fell to one knee many times. He fell completely off balance many times. Um, either the legs are just giving out on him or, you know, he's just completely out of whack. And for somebody to be completely out of whack now for two years, I don't think it's mechanics are off. I just think it's that you're, you've lost a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not no doctor. Again, I'm no trainer either, but, you know, maybe he did change up his routine in the offseason. It looks like it. Yeah. You know, we're going to see all the quotes probably in the next couple of weeks. A bunch of articles coming out. Oh, we see, we're see we seeing Stan and Tim, but he looks good in BP. Yeah. I want to see what it looks like in live pitching. Because, listen, there's a little bit of a difference, too, with playing in Tampa than in New York. You're playing oh, in yeah. beautiful Tampa, Florida. It's, what, 75 it's degrees, hot. 80 degrees Body when we're there. feels nice and loose. Yeah. And then when you get to the Bronx and it's like, you know, April, it's a Tuesday and it's like, 37 degrees out, and you don't want to swing the bat at all. I mean, that's a big Facts. difference right there, guys. All day. I'm right there with you. Matthew Centrone, what's up, brother? He goes, proof is in the pudding with Marcus. That is 100% correct. And my guy, Moises Acevedo, says, my question is, why do the Yankees, why the Yankees did not give Stroman a press conference at Yankee Stadium as they always done with free agents? I know Soto was a trade. But look, I have an issue with that. I don't know what's going on exactly. I don't know if I don't know the reason why they're doing it. But when you get an elite player like a Soto, I don't care if you got him via trade. I don't care if you got him for one season. I want those photos of a presser. I mean, maybe they're, they're feeling like they're saving it until they sign him long term. But I, I still don't understand how you don't have the hat fitting, the jersey, the pictures. I don't get why that's happening, but. It obviously is. They're doing it with everyone. So I'm going I don't to know. be, it yeah, I'm going to be kicking myself if, you know, he brings that up. And I, I doubt he will. I don't know if it's a real big deal. I don't know if it made his dad upset again. We spoke about his dad being a big Yankee fan, but I mean, it would have been, you know, cool. I mean, it's a day, man. You know, these guys have unlimited money. Hal Steinbrenner, Brian Cashman, somebody could have been there and, you know, put the jersey on top. And maybe, you know, I see Mike saying Hal hates, um, Live person. Maybe he didn't want to answer the questions of the extension or, or Yeah, man, at this point. But he, he spent he spent some money. Spent he some did. money, guys. No, he guy. definitely did. You can't say he didn't. But um, I don't know. Didn't want to face the music with the the questions about the extension. I mean, I'm I'm just guessing at yeah. this point, but it would have been nice to do, you know, a press conference team with the twenty two jersey. That's something that we can kind of hold on to and have that over um uh, you know, other teams, I guess. Yeah. We got them first. We got first licks. So. Well, here's what I'm going to do. When I go back to New York, I will ask Jordan the Barber. I'm going to ask Jordan the Barber. Jordan, how do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel about the Zoom thing with, with Soto? And is it a problem? I need to know. Like, I know there's been communication. Is it an issue? We need to know right now. Let me know. You know what? Keep it between us. But here is some news. And it's not good news for the Yankees. Let me throw this on the screen right here. This is from Ken Rosenthal. Sources, the Astros are making a push for Josh Hader. Ariel, I got to get your thoughts on that one. I don't know. Maybe he'll he'll tell uh, whoever the new manager is that he just want to pitch in the ninth. Maybe or he just want to get more than, more than three outs. Maybe, maybe, maybe opening day. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to face them today. Yeah. I, Soto? I don't want to face Soto. That's my guy. We played in San Diego together, but... I mean that that would be that'd be pretty huge for them. I don't know if I mean the mentality that he has about not, you know, pitching more than, than three outs is kind of crazy to me. But yeah. Again, if it's I gotta see the deal. I really gotta see the deal. Cause I know you were like, no, I don't want any part of him. But honestly, I not know at Kevin's 20 the same million way. A pop. Not, not at not 20. At 20 million a pop. But if we're talking three years, if we're three talking years. three years, that's where you can sell it to me, Pete. You yeah, can. no, I, I said this already about him. Like, people are like, Pete, would you get mad if the Yankees... No, not at all. I, I wouldn't be mad if the Yankees signed him. I'd expect different from him. And yeah, he would kind of be, for me, he'd almost be on that same boat as Strowman in the sense of like, I need you Show guys me. to prove it. Why? I need, to, I need to see it. I don't care about the talk. I don't even care about the things you did before. Like, if you're a Yankee, I'm not going to hold you to you refuse the pitch. And to me, that's a character thing, not about... I'm protecting my arm. I'm going to be a free. That's a character thing, in my opinion. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're in or out. You should do whatever your manager is asking of you. Take that ball and go. It's not like he had an injury. The idea was I'm protecting my arm because I'm going to be a free agent. Well, 
that worries me about your character and who you are as a person and a teammate. That stuff worries me. But yeah, is is money really gonna change? It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, is money really gonna change a man? That's my biggest thing. So now that he's getting paid some serious money, is he gonna be like, yeah, you know, I'll get multiple outs? I mean, right. I don't know. Exactly. And you know the you know the Astros are gonna be in it down the stretch. So if they're in it, I think he's gonna get, you know, multiple outs. And listen, as much as we hate him, they got winners in that clubhouse. So maybe they change, you know, his perspective, saying, "Listen, bro, it could be, you know, whatever time of the year it is. We need you to get more than three outs. Like you do it. Yeah. Like we we know what it takes to win. You haven't won anything. So this is what you got to do for us. And maybe they change, you know, his mindset. We'll see." Potentially, and I know um, John Heyman is also reporting that that is the case, that the Astros are making a very strong push, apparently, to try to lock in Hayter. And the fact that Hayter is even still out there is is kind of shocking to me. And all and the Monty, guys that are still out and there. And Snow. And even it's, it's uh, really Brian Cashman's wild. boy. Brian Cashman's uh, boy, Matt Chapman. Yeah, Chapman's <laughs> out there. Cody Bellinger is still out there. I mean, we got a lot of guys that are still out there. I mean... There's potential that somebody could fall to the Yankees, but the Yankees are still waiting to lock down their bullpen. If if I had to make a guess right now and kind of allow myself not to be shocked of a deal, it's probably that the Yankees look to lock in another pen arm, maybe two, because here's what I was thinking about, Mario, right? Mm. A lot of these guys are maybe falling out of the money range because people got to remember, it's basically a dollar for a dollar right now because the Yankees have gone over that luxury tax. So if the yep. Yankees give a guy right now $10 million, let's say Hector Neris right. for an example, who I would like, you give Hector Neris $10 million, you're you're basically paying him closer money. I mean, you're talking about that gets to maybe $16, $17 million with, with the tax yeah, wild. involved. So it, it, it is a bit crazy. The thing that I would, I could see the Yankees doing, Keenan Middleton is not going to cost... Six, seven, eight million a year, I don't believe. Nope. And Wandy is still there. The Yankees know him so well. Wandy could maybe ask for a little more because then he's done it longer. So he might look for six, seven, eight million dollars a year. And some team would probably eventually give it to him. But I think those are the two. I know they talked about Robert Stevenson recently. I still think like maybe Keenan Middleton and Wandy are the guys, or the Yankees may sign a bigger name. And then look to trade your Canelys or your Loisaga, who has a bit of money attached to him. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Wandy, I just don't think that they go. I think Middleton would be the move first because they have, even though we're not crazy about him, they got probably Nick Ramirez to face, like, you know, some lefty, not not a big out, but, you know, I guess more to kind of just eat innings that the Yankees are down a lot like he did last year in some cases. In other cases, yeah. he was getting big outs in the seventh and eighth inning, and we were sweating. For no reason. That that should never happen. And they got Gonzalez. You know? They got him in yeah. that trade with uh with Vivas, I believe it was. So um I think Middleton would be more of the move. The Yankees would do get another righty in the pen. Cause I saw that yes posted yesterday, I believe it was on Hot Stove, showing that Marinaccio was, you know, in the bullpen. And the way he looked last year, he should not be locked in to the I'm pen. Worried. He I'm should worried. not. I mean, there's a there's a few guys that they could surprise us in spring training. Uh, Yuri De Los Santos. Oh, yeah. The guy that, yeah, Filthy he's a self. sinker, sinker baller Filthy that self. you guys, I think, are going to like a lot. So I'm looking, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think about him. Hopefully, he has a good spring. Yeah, he got absolutely filthy stuff. And guys, um, based off what I remember was reported yesterday, I think Brian Cashman is supposed to speak at four, but yep. I'm keeping eyes on that to see if that is going to be put on. Yes, I got everything pulled up just in case, but we do have the voicemail line is indeed open. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the first one. I think it's from our good friend DJ Stelio. So let's go ahead and play that. Mary, let me know if you can hear it also. I think you should be able to. Yeah. What up, Simonetti is the one and only friendly neighborhood DJ Stelio calling in again. <laughs> how you doing? 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 Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? I'm feeling somewhat better, man, after the fiasco that happened with me on uh, Sunday. Getting sick and shish kebab. Um, yeah, I hope everybody, you know, I hope everybody isn't dealing with uh, any sickness because it sucks. Oh okay. my goodness. Um, I don't know if you remember me speaking about this or if you heard anything from this one dude on the fan. I don't know if anybody else heard it, 
um, about the whole, if you want to root for Marcus Stroman, the best thing that you can do is uh, block him. That way he can see when, you know, Yankee fans are upset with his performance, this and that. He'll focus on himself, on bettering himself, you know, for the next start. I feel like that could work, man. <laughs> it's so moronic that it makes sense. I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like that's an that's a ingenious move, man. <laughs> anyway, man, I got a joke for you. I got oh, a couple God, here we go. I don't know here if you go. want me to hit you with one or two. But, um, hey, Pete, have you heard of Murphy's Law? How about Cole's Law? It's thinly sliced cabbage with salad dressing. It's really good. <laughs> Uh, that was whack. All right, man. Last one, last one. <laughs> what did the turkey say to the hunter on Thanksgiving morning? Quack, quack. Get it? Because he didn't want it to be eaten. So he <laughs> made duck sound? Yeah, no? All right, man. Peace. Ay, Dios mío. This that call was all over. That call was all over the place. <laughs> this, is, this is what we deal with here, folks. This is what we deal with. This is what I got to open the voicemail line to, the dad jokes. Duck. Quack, quack, said the, the, the turkey. Quack, quack. This is what we're dealing with over here. And he's happy because you found it funny. See, married is what you're doing. You're bringing, you know, you're, you're, sorry, you're, you're in tight. You're, you're, you're allowing this stuff to continue here. And uh, that's what, what you're going to do. But to answer the first part of what DJ Steele said there, no, I mean, look, they they, they want to, what, protect Marcus Stroman? If he has a bad outing, the, you block him so he doesn't get to see what you said? That's ridiculous. This is New York. This is everything he knows it is. If Marcus Stroman is bad, he should understand the fans are going to boo the shit out of him. There's going to be bad tweets. There's going to be mean tweets, quote unquote, of going at Marcus Stroman. That's just is what it is. That's the nature of the beast. Listen, every player has social media nowadays, and they post some players don't during the season at all, don't even look at it. But mostly, you know, a lot of the guys are using their social media. So, of course, listen, man, you know, he's going to be posting on there whether we like it or not. I just hope, you know, he starts off well. And if there's a bad start at any point in the season or a couple, you know, back to back, because it happens even to the best of yeah. the best, just stay away. Don't post anything stupid or moronic to get, you know, Correct. Yankee fans fired up at you. You're a professional, bro. Like you're getting paid, you know, pretty solid money. What, 18 and change a year? 18 million a year and change? So, yeah. I don't know, man. Just control yourself. We're going to root for you, man. Just pitch well. That's all we need. Help us win. That's it. And we got a super chat from Jake, Sox fan, but I love the content and teaching me more about this game. Let's go, Rangers. Range, oh, maybe hockey, maybe. hockey, 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 hockey. Okay, I was Got gonna say, I'm very yeah. cons- like right there. I'm thinking Red Sox fan likes listening to the Yankees, but let's go Rangers. And I'm going, I whoa, that one really got me. I'm like, okay, appreciate it, Rangers. All right, there we go. Appreciate, appreciate that, it. my guy. Appreciate that, my guy. Let's go ahead and get to the next voicemail as we are getting close to four o'clock. We'll see if Cashman is gonna come on. Hey, Pete, it's Moses Acevedo. I just wish that Strowman, when he starts his press conference or he finishes press conference, that he would start off by saying, I would like to apologize to the whole entire New York Yankee fans and the organization uh, for coming out the way I came out. And I hope that when I start my first day as a starter uh, with the organization and the team and my teammates, that uh, the fans can accept me and can accept my apologies for all the comments and all the blocks that I've done, uh, Instagram or Facebook and so on. Thank you very much, Pity. Appreciate it. Keep doing your thing. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, uh, Strom is not going to do that. Um, at the end of the day, you know, he's very confident. And look, look, what is, the, what is the best thing he can do for the fans? It's really simple. Go out there and pitch well and win games. That's all he could do. Yeah, you he's know, a he's he's kind of that dog mentality. He's not gonna go out there and you and be like, "Hey guys, sorry for blocking you." Like at the end of the day, right. guys, it's it's like it's social media. It's not like Correct. it's not like it's not real life, man. I'm sure he's not gonna know who you are if you went up to him at like 
You saw him down the line. He, he said to me, signed you a ball. What are you going to say? Yo, you blocked me on Twitter, bro, and blocked me? Like, come on. It's not, it's not the end exactly. of the world. I don't know. Yeah, that that's that's definitely... That's not going to happen. It is social media at the end of the day. Yes, it is a form of communication for players and fans and everything of that nature. But at the end of the day, it is it is social media. I do wish the, the media themselves brought it up a little bit. I think that would have been good to see, but Yeah, come on, bro. You know, we we know how the how the media is, you know, they they don't want to ask. And look, here's the way I see the media. Maybe I'm seeing the media wrong, but you know, this is the way the media used to be. It's supposed to be the voice of the fans, that in between of the fan and the players. And with social media, they know how fans feel. They're on it all day. They know that Yankee fans are sitting there going this dude has blocked everybody. Sixty, I say 67.226% of the fan base have been blocked by Marcus Stroman. So, you know, it would have been better if a media had brought it up because Marcus Stroman ain't going to come out and say, hey, guys, I just want to apologize before I start. That ain't that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. No chance. No chance in hell. And I am still waiting. I have not seen any update regarding Brian Cashman speaking, but again, that was mentioned by everybody yesterday. He was supposed to speak. I believe it was at 4 o'clock. So we're waiting on that. Don't know if we'll be covered. Maybe they'll just be quotes. But we do got a couple of more voicemails to get to. We'll keep those rolling. Hey, I'll Pete, your boy Simon calling from New Haven, Connecticut, in Bella Vista. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Simon. Well, the Strowman uh, press conference, uh, a little bit all right, you know. He'll do his best, you know, and the fans will uh, uh, like him once he starts going out there in the mound. I wanted to answer your question yesterday about Michael Kay. I think the guy does smoke crack. I mean, where does he come up with these stupid <laughs> statements that he makes from fortune cookies? I mean, the guy's a schmuck, Michael Kay. I'm telling you, he gets on the fans too when he, you know, like when uh, he screwed up on that Aaron Judge almost home run call. He says, "Well, you know, the ball is going to be caught." I mean, nobody's blaming him. My God, I mean, he must get his stuff from Portugal. He, he's a schmuck. Anyway, I still feel good about the the Yankees. I still think we're going to go all the way this year, Pete, in 2024. Anyway, rock on, Pete. NYY Underground forever, and Aaron Judge is a gift from God. Bye. Oh, uh, yeah, he is. He is certainly a gift from God. No doubt about that, Simon. No doubt about it. I appreciate you, my guy. Thank you for that one. And, hey, uh, Simon thinks that um, Yankees are going all the way this year. It's the possibility that everything goes the right way. Again, um, I'll go back to this we kind of spoke about before. I know there's been a lot of talk. There's, there's an article out there saying that the Yankees are the third best team in the AL East. I don't know how you guys feel about that. A lot of things go wrong. Best team? Third best, third best team, third best Ooh. in the AL East. Okay. Um, I think it's they think that Tampa and obviously the Orioles are better, or it might be Toronto. I'm not sure exactly, but I only think that the Orioles are significantly better. Yeah, Boston. I don't know, not, man. We know. You know, not not Boston, but maybe the Rays will take a step back because of the whole Wander Franco thing. I don't really know. That team but, always figures something out, man. That's that's the craziest thing about Tampa is like they'll lose a bunch of guys and it's like, all right, you look up in June, it's like they're still in this thing or they're in first place. How? Like they they figure they figure ways out to do it, but third place as of right now, it's a bit of a tough call for me, man. The Yankees offense this year should win them games. And I think that's something that a lot of us are missing because last year was so miserable. That we're not thinking about that. But the Yankees offense used to win them games. Yeah. Like if it was, you know, eight to four and the fourth, you're like, all right, Yankees got a chance of coming back. They might win that game, you know, 10 eight. And, you know, hopefully this year you're going to see some more of that. But um, Jimmy DeCaro says second worst case, uh, thinks that a second, you know, second place team, worst case scenario. Um, I think it's hard not to say Baltimore is, is probably the dog right now that you're going after. I get it. I mean, just because they did it last year, and look, it's not like they've gotten worse. Baltimore has gotten better, and I do expect they should get, continue to get better. They might start the season with, um, with what's his face, uh, um, Jackson Holiday being on their team. And I don't think Jackson Holiday is going to struggle at the major league level, just so everybody's aware. I mean, they may have another rookie of the year just like that. So. Uh, does Check. Grayson Rodriguez take a step forward? Bradish yeah, and all those guys. They also get, what's his name back? Who's the lefty again? John Means. John Means comes back, who's been very, very good. So Baltimore got a chance to be a really good team. Of course, they don't have a closer. They got Kimbrell. He's going to blow saves in Camden Yards. I'll tell you that right now. Kimbrell's not going to be a lockdown closer. I highly doubt that's going to happen, especially in Baltimore. 
But Probably be we'll him and see. Cano. We'll see. They got Cano as well in the bullpen, but I could see Cano taking that role over because I, I, I personally couldn't sit there and trust Kimbrel being that guy. No, um, definitely. But honestly, listen, I don't know. If this is just being me being an optimistic Yankee fan, but I truly believe the Yankees are going to hit this year. Like, I, I mean, so too. look, look I at the so outfield too. that we were watching last year. Now we got Juan Soto. You can be a fan of Alex Verdugo or not. I think the guy's going to hit better than what yeah. we had last year. So. Think they're gonna hit? It's gonna be more entertaining. I can't tell you that they're definitely gonna be a first place team, but I think you could flip flop us in Baltimore right now. It just depends on, you know, who steps up for us and who steps up for them. So, okay, Mario, we do have comments here so far. I think this is one that's come out right now about Brian Cashman. He is talking. So this is from Max Goodman. Brian Cashman says he likes what the Yankees have in their starting rotation, but he didn't rule out another addition. That's a possibility. I think we have a good rotation if everything goes right, which we know is something we don't want to lay back and count on. And, you know, that is obviously, um, you know, uh, <laughs> something the Yankees learned. The Yankees learned that last year that they have to get better there. Connor O'Neill says, who is Baltimore pitching? I know their offense is loaded. Of course, Connor Ross says, you guys just answered that before I sent it, so. I bet. I, th <laughs> I think I think there's a chance they get Bieber. Reading that, if you reread that, uh -huh. if everything goes right, mm -hmm. we have a good rotation. Don't lean back and count on it. I'm not saying they're gonna go out and get your guy Dylan Cease because I know that's the guy that if they get Dylan Cease, should be doing cartwheels in the background and I'll just be talking to the people. But yeah, I think if Shane Bieber is cheap and again. Everybody knows we're desperate for starting pitching. It yep. depends who just falls into our lap. The later we get into, you know, the offseason, the closer we get to yeah. pitching and catchers reporting. It just depends what the market is, you know, what teams want who. But, man, I if Shane Bieber is cheap, and I know the stuff with, you know, his arm, it's not the greatest, the elbow, whatever yeah. the case may be. I think the Yankees, you know, might see what they can get. But the ground ball percentage... Is very nice on Bieber. Just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I know there's a Kevin. lot of people. Shout out to our guy, Kev. Very, very big in the ground ball percentage game. Just letting everybody know. But again, guys, as those comments filter in, what I have them for you. Look, the Yankees did learn that lesson too last year. You know what I mean? Um, The, the Yankees had a, a, a mess. They had a mess last year. You can never have enough pitching. There's no denying that. And nope. I truly believe... And I'll just say it now, I don't think this is a possibility. But I think the Dylan Cease thing is just the White Sox right now want a lot. I, I think he fits the Yankees so friggin' well. I think it makes all the sense in the world. Pair that guy with Blake. Pair that guy with Garrett Cole. Put him at the hip of Garrett Cole. They're very similar. They're very, very similar. And you put him with a guy like Cole, and I, I think you can really find something with a guy like him. But look, it's not going to come at the cost of Spencer Jones. That's not going to happen. You know, I was going to that, ask that's, you, that's not going to happen. I was going to ask you this because a lot of people are saying that they think it's over. I think there's a good chance that the offseason, you know, could be over from the starting, you know, uh, pitching department. Yeah. But when it comes to the deadline, because that's, you know, will be the next time that the Yankees be making, you know, any moves. What would be the difference between possibly, you know, trading? Because I don't think we're going to get Cease right now. But mm. the deadline, let's say Cease is having a pretty solid year, like he's about to be an all-star. Do you think the price difference is, you know, a huge difference or just, you know, no. maybe you have to add a player? Because it's still a year and a half. It's yeah. not just like a rental. I don't think it would be a huge difference. I think what could possibly happen is some other guys in the system step up and are having bigger years and become more attractive. I think there's a real possibility there. Maybe a guy like Peraz is not on the team, but he's tearing the cover off of the ball in AAA. And they and need it, somebody. It, it, it kind of brings that value up. They haven't found a good short something to go, hey, look, man, this kid is, we think this kid's legit. If he gets that starting time and, and gets to play every day, maybe we, you know, we add him as somewhat of a centerpiece along with maybe a Will Warren that's doing well. And you're all for those other names because there, because there could be other guys available. I think guys too, like, you know, Jared Cerna hasn't had the time to uh, really become a top elite prospect. I think this year he gets off to a good start. You could have a lot of teams probably asking about him, but there's, I just feel like the prospect pool 
could then be different because it is mid-year and guys have been playing already. So there might Those be some guys, different attractive players that they're not thinking about right now. That's a that's a pretty good point. Like we were talking about Cern a little bit earlier, you know, you know, me, you, and Kevin, but I mean, we'll see if those guys are having a good year. Maybe the White Sox see it as we're definitely a couple of years away. I think they know that already. Yeah. But if they truly see that, you know, we're not even going to compete next year, we'll get guys that'll be ready in maybe, you know, 2026, 2020, late 2025. Yeah. And just get them yeah. ready and give them an opportunity because, you know, there's no spot for them on, on your club. So we'll see what happens. But hopefully Dylan sees, man, at the deadline, if not now at the deadline. I would, I mean, let me let me tell you guys this right now. And I'm not even like, you know, I know how Mario feels. You know, me, Mario, Kev, we're going up there together, man. We can't wait. Uh, Francis, Hector, they're going to be joining us. But when we go to spring training, guys, like the greatest thing right now, um, the greatest thing right now would truly be if the Yankees did add a, a pretty significant name to that rotation. Oh, like, That'd we'd go into the year right now being optimistic being happy being excited but man oh man let me tell you if they added something like that i'm going to there saying this team could win a world series and, and and here's the beautiful thing it'll answer a big question for me because now nobody could deny that aaron boone better get it done because if he doesn't you're the problem brother you're the problem it's nobody you else everything. at this point. We've given you everything. What else do you want, blood? What else do you need from us to go out there and have this team win? There's nothing else we can give you. We gave you everything. We gave you everything. Even the bull. I think the bullpen, and I know nobody's very crazy about Clay Holmes closing games. I think it's going to be a little bit of him, a little mm -hmm. bit of Efros. But the fact of the matter is, man, you know, this has been – you got Soto and you got a couple other guys this offseason, so – off season has been an A. I would say it's been an A. I know there's different opinions here and there. Now nah, we got to get another starter. So people want to be hard graders, maybe say A minus, uh, B plus. I understand that, but the Yankees yeah. have done some work this off season. When I felt like no in doubt. the beginning, and a lot of fans felt like Pete that there wasn't, you know, there wasn't much out there. But you trade for Soto and you get a couple guys. You know, I think it was, uh, I think it was a good off season. But you get that starter. We'll be going there, and a lot of Yankee fans will be walking around in March with that Yankee gear on saying, nah, this team can win us a World Series 100%. Bro, you you add one more guy to that rotation. And look, I'm not saying that it's not possible. It's very possible. And the other thing, too, that we got to remember is a guy like Dylan Cease is past that arbitration number. He's only getting paid $8 million. You got him also for 2025. Uh, Dylan Cease is a guy that uh, a lot of people see the cons, and I keep telling everybody, but you got to look at the pros. And, oh, he's not worth that. He is worth what they're asking. I'm sorry to tell you, but he is. Three is in a row, 32-plus starts, 200-plus strikeouts. Again, find me the pitcher who has done it. Garrett Cole at his age didn't do that. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not comparing these two. I'm just saying where his value does lie. People go to, oh my God, ERA. But look at the value is all I'm trying to say. That is why they're asking for a lot. But potentially, maybe they get, like Mario said, into February, early, late January. And they go, hey, look, that team does have six top 100 prospects. Maybe we could strike a deal for three of those guys. But that's not the elite. And the Yankees go, you know what? Let's do that. Maybe, you never know, but I'll tell you this right now. They have added that guy to this rotation. Forget about it. How are, you, how are you not jumping for joy for this team? This is how I feel right now as a Yankee fan, and I know a ton of Yankee fans, Snell, Montgomery, whoever you may want. The way I see it is we got Stroman. The, the rotation is, is meh, Cole, and a couple question marks. The way yeah. I see it, our offense looks good to me, right? Rodon pitches well. I think Clark's going to be, you know, Decent, not as bad as he was in April last year. More towards the end. That's the Clark Schmidt we're going to get. All the names are still on the list, guys. Yeah. So right. it's getting later and it's getting later. Maybe, you know, guys are, yo, listen, I'm trying to be set. I want to know where I'm going right now. It's already, you know, you. almost late January, early February. I want to go somewhere. And listen, they don't want to pay me. All right, I'm going to go somewhere where they're still going to pay me enough and I'm going to win. So maybe yeah. that's the Yankees, but. I'm not sweating too crazy because I, I the way I'm thinking right now, 
the offseason most likely over when it comes to the starting pitching department. That's how I Both feel. Them, I'm going to allow myself to be surprised is what I'll do when it comes to the rotation. Connor yep, O'Neill with the super chat says, just in case I'm not available Monday, here's another super chat for you guys. Come to Tampa, let's drink and watch the Yankees in the sunshine. Let's Amen. go, my guy. Connor, we'll be seeing you over there, my guy. Uh, a couple of quotes from Brian Cashman. Uh, basically, what one, I, I think, uh, I forgot who actually said it, but I saw it earlier and I wanted to bring it up. But basically, he's using the, the regular Cashman line that we're always looking to improve. You know, not saying that we're out of this or we're done signing, but we're always looking to improve the bullpen and the rotation if something presents itself. Then he says, uh, Brian Cashman says the Yankees are better than they were last year and that the fans deserve better. Quote is, no one is handing us a trophy. We need to go and earn it. And the only way to do that is to have the most talent and the most insurance policies you can possibly have within reason. So again, that D word, depth, comes into play. The Yankees are going to need that. They know they're going to need that. Um, to say they have a team right now that can win, I, I don't go that far yet. I got to see it on paper. But I'll say this too, Mario, and I brought this up many times. I bring it up all the time now. Last offseason, they had, I think, on paper, one of the best rotations potentially they've had in ages. And look at that turned out. You might be you might be pleasantly surprised by the rotation this year. Honestly, I think we're showing, and I get it, the season that he had last year, we were very disappointed in Carlos Rodon. Mm -hmm. And there's, there, there was a quote, I think, Brian Cashman, we'll talk about it in a second, he just put out. Listen, I don't think that guy's a 6 ERA, 5 ERA kind of pitcher, even high fours. I think he can be, you know, low fours, hoping that he could be, you know, low threes, man. I think the guy could have a good year. The fact of the matter is he just has to be healthy, right? Yeah. We can't be go we also can't be going into the season where we hear a couple, you know, some news here and there that there's going to be a setback that oh, you know, he didn't pitch when pitchers and catchers reported. Because, you know, the back was still acting up. We were just treating a couple of things. But he'll still get his three or four starts in spring training. Like, honestly, Pete, I don't want to hear any news like that. I just hope that he, you know, uh, and his body is his body. Like, if he's yeah. hurt, don't pitch. Like, if, you, if you're yeah. hurt, don't pitch. But the same thing, it's like, listen, man, I don't want to hear any news. I want you to be ready. Have your full spring training so we can really see what you're about. I'll be honest with you, man. And I'm going to read a quote here that Brian Hoke just put out. I think she get a lot of people very excited. That's uh, something I put out there too that can obviously tell that Rodon looks in very, very good shape. But he's one of the main guys I want to talk to. Um, at least say something to because I'm a big fan of Carlos Rodon. Everybody could go back to my videos and see when he was with San Francisco. I was praying they traded for him um, that offseason. And the Yankees did have the idea of trading for him. They just couldn't get it to work. But here's the quote right here, and this should get everybody excited. Brian Cashman said that Carlos Rodon voluntarily reported to Tampa early and looks really good. Cashman said the Yankees are very optimistic that Rodon can return to form and be the pitcher we know he's capable of being. That is significant. That's significant. I'm because drinking. I'm there with you. Is this the Kool Aid? Is this the Kool Aid? Yeah, I'm drinking. I'm drinking the Rodon Kool Aid so much because let's be real, whether Kevin likes it or not, whether we like it or not, I don't want to say all the season depends because oh, wow. maybe chunk of maybe you know Nestor's really good, Showman's better than we thought, and Clark is better than he was last year, but a big chunk of this season depends on that guy. Oh yeah. Like no that, about you it. can't is, have a six or five ERA. You no, can't. No, no, he is so important to this club, man. He he needs to be able to give this team 140 plus and go out there and do his thing. I think one of the one of the one of the biggest things we can see from a guy like Rodon is that he took this off season seriously. It's clear as day when I saw him the other day. There wasn't many pictures of him. Thank you to Ashley Rodone's uh, Instagram. We got to see him walking his kids down the street, and you could just see immediately. I said, damn, he looks good. Like, you could tell the difference, especially in the face and the cheekbone area. Yeah. He looked a lot healthier. And for a guy with a chronic, a chronic back problem, as they say, you know, dropping some LBs is the best thing you could possibly do. Pitching's not easy with a bad back. Playing a sport is not easy with a bad back. So if that helps him in any way, 
he could be in a very, very good place for the Yankees, and they desperately need him. They desperately need him. I'm sticking to the – he came back. He's a competitor. He wanted a pitch. I'm sticking to that, that he wasn't ready, but he tried to come back a little faster because, you know – That's what I think. He wanted a pitch, and I'm sticking to that. And, I'm, you know, I hope that he, he proves a lot of us right. That he's going to have a good year, and he's going to help us, you know, because yeah. the end goal of 28 that we've been wanting. Speaking of that other guy that the Yankees may need, right? This is a quote on Stanton. He says, Stanton's in a really good place between his diet and off-season conditioning. Brian Cashman said he's always been one of the most feared hitters in the game. He's looking forward to getting back to that. I got to be honest. I take that one with a little more, um, you know, grain of salt, so to say, because it's not a knock on Stanton. It's not a knock on who he is as a person. The one thing... I don't think you'd ever knock Stanton on is that the guy's in phenomenal shape. He always has been in phenomenal shape. Um, you know, maybe getting leaner at this point of his career is is probably better. But um, I, I just have my doubts that we're talking about a guy that can become one of the most feared hitters in the game again, so to say. I have doubts of that. Does adding a Soto maybe make him better? You know, does he does he say, hey, you know, maybe I'm not that second big dog anymore like I was supposed to be? Does that kind of put a little chip on his shoulder to say, let me go out there and and try to be that guy again to compete with Judge and with Soto uh, for the home run title in, in the division? And, and maybe it's something that gets in his mind, but I can't be overly optimistic about Stan. I got to just wait and see with him. You know how I feel about Stan. I got to see it to believe it. Yeah. He can be great in spring training. Don't let me see him limp in spring training, by the way. No. He's going to hear my mouth screaming. No, and I know he's not going to be Ricky Henderson out there oh, stealing God. 10 bases in spring training. Like, right. I know that's not going to happen, but we'll love to see him, you know, again, spring training games, possibly in the outfield. Just see how he looks, how the legs look. Obviously, he's, he's not going to be, you know, the quickest guy out there, but we'll see how he looks, you know, uh, you know, a little better with the legs. The legs are the biggest thing for me. If his legs are shot, that's all I really, you know, have to know. He could play. Listen, if he plays 140 games, he's going to hit 30 homers. Like, the guy oh, yeah. has insane pop. Oh, yeah. No, that, he'll run hit? into a few. Is he going to have an yeah. OPS of what, like 700, 690, yeah. and yeah. be hitting 188, 190? Like, nah, we can't have that. No, no doubt about it. And yeah, he's going to run into his home, as we know that. But uh, we do got a couple of more voicemails. Let's keep those ones going. And as the Cashman comments come in, we'll have you guys covered. Hey, what's going on, Pete? What's going on, Mario? Yo. I just want to okay, okay. call you guys, okay. man. Uh, I kind of I kind of I kind of changed my mind, man. It's truth, bro, by the way, it's truth always, man. God bless you guys. What's up, Jesus, brother? Man. Okay. I kind of changed my mind. Well, I'm not completely changed my mind with Strowman. Okay. But, you know, to know that he's from New York kind of gives you a little, you know, kind of gives you a little indication like my man doesn't quit. You know what I mean? We, you know, we, we definitely built different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From borough to borough. You know what I mean? So I just feel like, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I, I mean, I, one out of ten, I, I think, I think my man's gonna pull like a seven, man. I think a seven, Ooh. seven, yeah, I think, I think, I think he's gonna do his thing, man. He definitely gonna do his thing. Um, hopefully we, you know, we make it happen, man. It's, and, um, I think we still need maybe like a bullpen to come in, you know, um, but besides that, man, hope the Yankees win the World Series, brother. Let's keep it real. Man, um, God bless you guys. Peace. Truth always. I always appreciate your voicemails, brother. Thank you so much. And look, I like the optimism on, on Strowman, man. It doesn't do anybody. Look, like I said before, you could believe whatever you want. You could think that, you know, he's going to be a failure. He's not going to be great. You could be upset with Marcus Strowman. But at the end of the day, guys, he is putting on the pinstripes come you know, his starts. He's either putting on those road grays or he's putting on the pinstripes. And at the end of the day, he is trying to help us win a World Series. So again, you know, don't you don't have to forget. You could forgive, but you don't have to forget. At the end of the day, you know, he, he's going to answer his own questions. He's the man that the words came out of his mouth. Nobody else. Let's see him go out there, perform. And look, Strowman's good. He's going to be a fan favorite. He's going to be a fan favorite of this club. There's no because, denying that. Because you'll love for it. 100%. You'll love when he's dancing on the mound. Whether you like guys dancing or not, I know fans are kind of 50-50 on that too. If he's showing up other teams and we're winning ball games, 
you're like, all right, this is the guy I can root for. Like, he's a true New Yorker. Like, he was meant to be a Yankee. Yeah. I promise your opinion's gonna change on him. He's winning this baseball yeah. game. No doubt. But I, I like the I like the optimism. I, I get it if you're still on the side. Honestly, there's nothing wrong if you're still on the side of. Listen, I want to wait and see. I'm not gonna like this dude, but I'm not gonna hate him yeah. until you know he pitches for us. So I completely yeah. understand that side too. No doubt. Ken Rogers, my guy with the super chat, says gotta have depth. And they didn't last year. When you go into the season with uh, Stanton, Rodone, DJ, Nestor, Rizzo, um, I don't want to see, I don't want to see bums playing. If any of these uh, guys don't pan out, I'm right there with you, man. If they don't pan out, no question about it. You got to have depth on your team. And I showed that picture before because Marcus Stroman did say that you know Soto's probably one of the best pitchers, uh, best hitters he's ever faced. And he goes, putting him with Judge, that's also the reason why the Yankees got to resign him because you want that duo for the next multiple years to come. That is what you want to have on your team. We will find a place for Spencer Jones to play, guys. You know how this team is with their injuries. We will find somewhere for Spencer Jones to play if he's killing it. That's how it works. You got to be performing straight up. We'll find a way. Trust. No doubt about it. And people are going to be interested in this comment right here. Jason Dominguez is doing well, according to Brian Cashman, who said that Dominguez's return um, ETA is sometime in the summer. We're going to need him whenever he's ready. Uh, Mario, uh, uh, as the season progresses, this is either going to be one of two things when it comes to Dominguez. It's going to be, we need Dominguez back. We need him back now. Or who's, who's the odd man out? when Dominguez comes back because that would mean everybody's performing well and you look at the club and go damn this team is really good where's Jason Dominguez gonna play I mean do we take the bullet and risk maybe Alex Verdugo's having a solid season I was gonna say if he's leading off for us where's Doogie go yeah if he's um if he's leading off and you know slapping doubles all over the place for us like I said leading off or Stan's having of course I'm not gonna hold my breath if he's having you know Hitting 240, he's got, what, 18 bombs and it's July. And we're like, oh, we we're talking about DFA and this guy. And, you know, now he's having a good season. It's like, what do we do? And what if the club, yeah. and I was talking to our guy, Joey Bagadonuts. If you're in the chat, what's up, my guy? Joey Bagadonuts, we over. Hey. We were talking, and what if the clubhouse is doing well, Pete? Like, what if everything is good in the clubhouse? Yankees are six games, uh, you know. On top of first place, what do you do? Yeah. Do you trade your leadoff hitter and Alex Verdugo for some, you know, relief pitcher that you're going to have for a year or two? That's a, a good problem to have, but a problem that the Yankees might have to face. You know, the thing is that if it comes around that deadline time, you know, honestly, you probably hold on to them. And you say, hey, Jason, tear it up in AAA. Until we find a spot, you know, until maybe something happens. We know we got him there. Let's say something, God forbid, knock on wood, happened in August. Well, he could come up. I mean, it's it's a very difficult thing because you don't want him just wasting away in AAA. You want him to, 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 to be at this level performing. But look, injuries happen, and guess what? You do got to show a bounce back. So he should get time in AAA to show that I'm ready to play ball, you know, because here's the thing. If Jason Dominguez is struggling in AAA, you don't have to call him up. Yep. If Jason Dominguez is hitting low 200s and he's, he's trying to get back to what he is and then maybe he gets hot in August, then you got a different conversation. But you give him you give him time. You give him time to show that I'm, I'm ready to go again. It shouldn't be that he's healthy. And, well, we, now we got to trade for Dugo, even, even though he's having a terrific season for us. That, that, that's something you, you can't do. No. You can't just plug anybody into that leadoff spot. Like, obviously, in a perfect world, you trade one of, like, Verdugo, he's having just a solid year, not a great year, like a solid year. Yeah. You get a nice return back from him. You just put Jason, because he's raking in AAA, you just put him right into that leadoff role. That's in, like, a perfect world. But like I said, what if everybody's just killing it? You're going to ruin, you know, the clubhouse chemistry because you want to trade a guy because your young star is ready to come up? Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, of course, again. Is Verdugo going to definitely rake and Stanton going to have a bounce back season? Yep. I mean, I, I doubt it. I don't think they're both going to happen, but if they do, that's a problem. Thank God I'm not the GM of the Yankee. That's all I got to say. 
Yo, they call him out the GM. The Yankees. I'm telling you, man, your boy here is Dave Dombrowski. <laughs> We'd have a much better looking team right now, but we wouldn't have much of a much of a prospect pool anymore. I tell you right now. <laughs> let's let's get to the next voicemail. Hey, yo, yo, we back at Donuts so Hey, yo, my boy Mario, he got the gabagoo. <laughs> Don't need a lot of good good answers there. Uh, I think maybe you know maybe the guy really grew up. Let's hope. Let's go get Wandy. Middleton, and let's put on spring training. I can't wait for spring training. Okay. Hey, look, adding two arms to the bullpen. Maybe that's the route the Yankees go. Um, Man, I want to be surprised with a starter, man. I'm still holding out hope. I really am still holding out hope that um that that, that that's the route that we can go. Um, yeah, Joey, and, Joey and, Bag and of Donuts. Happens. Joey Bag of Donuts talking about uh the do-rag we were talking earlier. If the if uh, the Brock's are not the do rag, Strowman's gonna be rocking one. That <laughs> man said do rag giveaway day. <laughs> if the Yankees do that, let me tell you, so that's gonna be some funny shit if they actually did do a do rag giveaway. That'd be oh pretty damn God. classic. A big Yankee logo on it. That'd be fire yeah. though. That'd be fire. That'd be though. funny. Got a couple of more voicemails. Let's keep them going. Hey Pete, it's Matt again. Now, as much as I would want to agree that the New York Yankees will go all the way. I'm going to pump the brakes on that a little bit and say that I believe that we will make the playoffs, but I think that we still have work to do when it comes to becoming a world Series caliber team. You got to remember, I grew up in the time where I got to see the late 90s teams. And so what I've seen with these New York Yankees over the last couple of years, I still believe that we are maybe one or two pieces away and maybe a brand new GM, not someone that's been with us for like 30 years and don't know what the hell you're doing. Okay. Uh, until we are a real legitimate squad again. Like I said, I love my Yankees, but the, I have to be realistic with it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, I don't think Brian Cashman has a shit ton of time left um, if they don't win. You know what I mean? If the Yankees don't win, this this could very well be the last contract he sees, at least as the GM of the club. I think that'll probably be it for him. And on the other side of Aaron Boone, Aaron Boone got one year. I mean, this is it for Boone. I mean, could the Yankees re-sign Boone? Yeah, that wouldn't shock me one bit if the Yankees gave him another three or four-year deal. That wouldn't shock me one bit. But if somehow, and I don't even want to talk about this because I don't want to say if the Yankees missed the play. I don't want to say any of that, but for me, when it comes to Boone, I'm sorry. To me, the experiment is over. If you don't win the chip this year, we're getting somebody new in here. That's just the way I see it. Not everybody needs to see it that way. But he's the only manager that started and did not take his team to the World Series in the first five years of his day. And I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to do. I get it. Baseball's tougher now. It's more competitive across the board. I understand that. But for me, Boone got to take this team to the World Series. If not, all right, man, it's, it's, time to, it's time to make a change. It is as simple as this. Pete said it right when we got Juan Soto, and I couldn't agree anymore. You're Hal Steinbrenner. When it's all said and done, or be, excuse me, before the season starts, you tell this to Cashman and Aaron Boone. When it's all said and done, I want a trophy on my desk or you're both gone. Yep. I think that is very fair. I went out. We made all these trades. We got all these guys. I pretty much did what Yankee fans wanted me to do. I'm spending money. I'm doing all this. And, oh, my God, if they get Blake Snell, and they don't win a World Series, then there's something that's really wrong with this team. 
What are you gonna say? It's the players. We got basically a brand new team. You yeah, you can't. And, you can't. And, that, and and I'll be honest with you, that's one of the other reasons too why I'm so adamant about the Yankees adding more to the rotation and making one more big move because you know, now you're sitting there going, all the excuses are thrown away. There is no questions. This is the club. Look at what we've given you. Now it's up to you to do everything else. You and your coaching staff. But at the end of the day, Booney, you've been there. You've been there longer than everyone. So now it is simply up to you, and that is it. And look, man, if if it doesn't work and they don't win, I don't think you have a choice but to say it's time to move on to, to somebody new. Whoever that may be, I don't know. But whoever that person is, it's time to move on and start anew. Um, you know, uh, they still got a lot of big things to do. They got to lock in. They got to re-sign Soto. We know that. You know, Soto's going to be very, very expensive. But I don't think you trade for Soto going out. Ah, we're going to look to win now because, let's be real, if that was the case, you're probably bringing in Snell too without even thinking about it. You're like, F this, bring everybody here. If if it's a one year type thing, you get Hater, you get Snell. Oh, you get everybody. You get you say you know what? Go to go to three sixty five this year. Forget it. Yeah. Next year it'll it'll reset. Forget it. Yep. They get rid of all that salary next year. We got to go win this year, and you know they haven't done that necessarily. And Charlie Sheen says Brad Ausmus next Yankee manager. Nah, I don't I don't think that's the route you want to go. To be honest, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. That's but the route you want to go. But hey, it's it's World Series or bust. Listen, as we get later in the day, honestly, this might just be, you know, me, I'm the optimistic Yankee fan. I'm a little younger, got that, you know, optimism in me. But hey, the way I feel, we're just getting closer and closer to pitchers and catchers reporting. Yep. And I just have a better feeling that Blake Snow, there's a chance that he may be a Yankee. It's there's very, no very possible. There are no reports that I've seen. I I just see nine years, two seventy. I mean, I hope Scott Boris knows nobody's giving that to him. Yeah, Nobody's no giving him that. So no we'll see doubt about it. We'll see. No, it's going to be interesting, man. As as we get further and further into the year, and 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 into these guys not signing, somebody very very much could fall to these guys, and and the Yankees could make one of those moves. So we do got one more voicemail I want to get to, and then we get ready to wrap up because I do believe Brian Cashman is done. I haven't seen any additional quotes. Just one about up, Rizzo we'll for you. Oh, there there's is one about, about Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah. Let me see. Is that under Hoke? Uh, I'll send Hulk it in the group it. chat. I just sent it to you. Perfect. So let me get this one pulled up really quickly. Here it is. Bam. All right. Yeah. So there is one about Rizzo. Then we'll get to that last voicemail here. Let's get this back on the screen. Doctors have told the Yankees that Anthony Rizzo is 100% cleared from his concussion last season. Cashman said, that said, they know the brain is a tricky situation, so some of it will be wait and see. That's a very good point. Hey, I, that, that's a very good point. Matter of fact, we have our very own doctor in here, Dr. Jeff J., who mentioned the same thing. He goes, you know, there really isn't a 100% clear for concussion injuries. That it's, it's almost a wait and see type approach is that you can have one and you can feel okay, but then there's certain things that you don't do daily, but you do it and you're like, oh yeah, I'm definitely not the same. So it, it, I agree with Cashman on that one, that it has to be a wait and see type thing, but they're going to need Rizzo to be pretty good this year. I have a, I'm pretty confident out of like the three, the three old guys we'd like to talk about, Stanton, LeMayu and Rizzo, that Rizzo's going to have. Not the first two months that he had last year, yeah. But he's not going to be anywhere close to how bad he was when the guy was striking five or striking out five times a game. Oh, and we're God. all like, this dude's not okay. But guess what? He's in the lineup the next day. Yeah. And we're not doctors, but we can see. Like, bro, the ball, he's kicking the ball at first base. The guy's a gold glover. So that yep. just happens now after the Tatis injury. Yeah. I mean, that injury really, between that and the judge injury, that really messed up our season. But, man, uh, I'm hoping for a bounce back year for him. Yep. For sure. Now let's get to the last voicemail. Let's play that one now. Hey, P. Hey, Mario. How you guys doing? How you doing? Yo, yo, yo. Question. If Jason Dominguez is on pace to come back May, June, like the report that we saw, 
what do the Yankees do? I mean, our outfield is full, and Giancarlo Stanton is our DH. Where is Jason Dominguez going to play? Okay. I mean, I, I think that's going to become a, a serious issue if all the guys are still healthy in May and June and Jason Dominguez is in the minors ranking. What, what do you think the possibilities are? I mean, if Stanton's not doing good, I mean, do you guys see the Yankees releasing him? Because if not, what is the other option? Jason Dominguez can't throw yet from Tommy John. When he comes back, he can only hit. So he's going to have to DH if he's going to play. I don't know. I think that's going to be a real issue when that time comes, if he really comes back in May and June. Let me know what you guys think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we 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 oh, did cover this. We covered this a little bit, but I mean, I'll make it. I'll make it really, really easy for you guys. That is, you know, it's not a problem. That's the best case scenario. Is that the Yankees are kind of in that position of well, what do we do here? That's the best case scenario. Um, when you have this type of surgery, you got to prove yourself. So he's gonna have to hit in Triple A first, and that that's all that that's all there is to it. He's gonna have to hit in the minors and kind of force that thing to happen. And go from there. But that would be best case scenarios if you're looking back going, what the hell do they do? That's the best case scenario. Yeah, um, I think if the Yankees were another club and they were dying to sell tickets because when it first came out, I believe that the return date for Jason Dominguez was in August. Yeah. But I think if the Yankees were absolutely desperate and he really wanted to, he can be back in late, late May. Like I'm talking like the 29th, yeah, definitely. 30th. Definitely. If he really wanted to. I think that you're going to get reports of him running the bases, maybe even in spring training. He'll be doing, he you know, yeah, I he'll be he doing will, yeah. stuff like that. Maybe hitting off a tee in late, late May, early May, and then once we get into June, I think he's gonna play a little bit. He's probably gonna play two or three weeks in AAA. Like you know, you're super young. We don't want to rush you back, especially if the team is doing well. They're obviously yeah. not gonna say we don't need you right now, but they're probably gonna say something along the lines of, "Listen, you're still a little young." It's a very serious surgery, and, you know, we got to see how you look down there first. We don't yep. want you – I'm not saying he would hurt the big league club because I'm not saying he's going to come back and be, you know, horrendous, but right. right now we're looking – the way the Yankees see it, hopefully we're looking pretty good. Verdugo's having a solid year. He's leading off for us. The outfield's fine. Stanton's doing okay. I'm not saying the guy's going to hit 250, but we'll give you some time down there, and then we'll reassess maybe in late June – Early July when we're talking about All Star Break, trade deadline, you know, things of that nature. Yep. But they're not they're not thinking about him coming back in May. I guarantee you that. They'll tell yeah. him to take it easy. We don't need you right now. Yeah, no, I mean you said that you're you're right on you you said everything that I could say on that one is uh, that that's what it's looking like right now. And uh best case scenario again is the Yankees are kind of scratching their head about what they do. That's the best case scenario, and and hopefully that will be the case, and that is the way that is the way this thing kind of plays itself out to be. That will be absolutely perfect. But again, I mean, uh, just to wrap this this whole thing up right now, you know, the Yankees. Uh, we we had the introduction of Marcus Stroman. He's overly confident. He believes is a very good team. He's saying he's a hundred percent healthy. He's ready to rock and roll. Brian Cashman is kind of out there saying that right now they're not looking for. You know, they feel like they're set, but they're always open to adding some more to this team. Like, like like Mario said, maybe some of these guys' prices come down. Maybe it gets to a point of where the Yankees see it and go, it's kind of too good to, to pass up on. Um, maybe some of the trade scenarios get, you know, a little more active and the Yankees find themselves in a position for another trade because I do think the best case scenario is that you add to that rotation with one more starter and either Nestor or Clark Schmidt, however you want to see that, goes to the pen back in that Johnny Brito type role last year and a spot starter type role. I think that would be, that, that would be the, to me, that's ideal for the Yankees. Is it necessary? No, but it would be ideal. Your, your head would be held highest going into spring training that way. You'd be walking around your town or wherever you live saying, my New York Yankees had the best offseason. Uh, you can yep. see the Dodgers, too, if you really want. But in the AL, my New York Yankees had the best offseason, and Easy. I think this team could definitely make it to the World Series. And whatever happens in the World Series, I think they have a chance to win it. You got to play the games first. That's my yep. biggest thing. You got to play. 
So that's what it's all about. It's all about playing games. So, uh, guys, we're going to get ready to wrap this one up here again. Just another reminder and just another announcement. Uh, the 22nd, that is, of course, coming up on, I want to say Monday, Monday, the 22nd. Everybody understand that is a very, very big day for NYYU, guys. We're going to have uh, a six to eight hour stream, probably more towards eight hours, to be honest. But everything we get that day is going to go for our spring training. And, and we do have a goal in mind that will be on the screen so everybody can see it. I'll be joined by Mario. I'll be joined by Dane. I'll be joined by Kev that day. It's going to be really exciting. Um, we're, we're, Sean, we're already going to Tampa. We're already there. We already got our flights booked. All yeah, that we'll stuff's booked. There's just other things that we definitely need while we're there. Um, media credentials we've already looked into. That does cost. Um, our Airbnb, we had to get a larger one. That is costing, of course. Tickets are all are, are costing. We do need additional equipment to be able to film outside uh, where we're at the stadium. We're doing interviews with fans. We're asking fans questions. Uh, we're doing things along the lines of even um, stuff for giveaways. And when I mean giveaways, I mean, hey, you come interview, here's your stuff. You know, here, here's the gift that we're giving you for that. So we will be there. If you guys want to swing by, you see the merchandise. We're all going to be wearing it. Yo, what up, fellas? Come and take a picture. Come say hi. Come hang out with us. But again, that is coming up in March. Can't wait for it. Uh, Mario, any, uh, any last words for everybody? Yeah, like what Angelo said there in the chat. Stop acting like the Yankees don't have enough money, guys. I don't feel bad for them one bit. The Yankees are going to make plenty of money. If you're there that opening series, if you're there in spring training, look at the amount of Juan, Juan Soto jerseys you see and Aaron Judge jerseys you see and hopefully Blake Snell jerseys you see. So that would be pretty cool. But Yankees make a ton of money. But nah, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. I know it's it's kind of, I like to call it dry January. There's not much, yeah. but uh, pitches and catches are pouring soon. I know people are starting to get really excited for uh, the baseball season. So are we. Yeah. Catch us at the stadium in April, April 20th for that event. That's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. We'll be there. The whole team yeah. will be there. And, um, and in Tampa as well. But appreciate you guys stopping by, you know, leaving all your questions and stuff like that. We appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, Bronx of nothing on Saturday. So, Let's go. you know, be be sure to hopefully there'll be some news by then and not yeah, just this. So. Maybe there'll be something else. But until next time, guys, appreciate you and we'll catch you later. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. It's heavy. Famous love. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots around my neck. Self respect when you out of line, you put yourself in check. Uh, they don't hear me, they don't, they don't, they don't hear me though. Cycle going round and round and round like a merry go. Stand for truth or fall for any old scenario. That's why I keep my circle smaller than a cherry, yo. Cause this the company you kick. Stay woke, uh, please don't get caught slick. End up sewing what you rig. Know your worth and don't sell cheap. The ghost is inside of me, can't take it out of me.